Fathers of all fathers, his name is Jesus Christ. And our Father in heaven. I would like to ask your undivided attention as I will expound to you, not very long today, a very powerful message. And you can find it in the book of Genesis, chapter 8, beginning from verse 17 to verse 19. And I would like also to connect the same message in another book of the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, 127, beginning from verse 1 all the way to verse 5. These two particular book of the Old Testament. I will read to you in Psalms 127, 1 to 5. Follow me. Meditate in the message of the song. And then you can understand what God will be presenting to you, to us this afternoon. Take note of the first word. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants his sleep to those he loves. Children are her a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, our children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Will you stop there for a moment? <clears throat> now, we can say in Psalms 127 and also Genesis 17 to 19, it is a very timely message to our present time when families in many countries of the world are breaking down. I will cite some of the reasons in the opening of this study this afternoon, then we'll go ahead and proceed to the blueprint of what the Lord has authored many, many years ago as a model to the ages for a home, even when the world's culture is changing. Now, there is a big difference between a house and a home. Now, the Lord God builds a home. And so, let us ponder and dive into the study today. Now, in the, the present condition of the world, there's a lot we call the present surge of a culture of the family in the 21st century. Now, there's what we call a mixture of lifestyles, a mixture of beliefs, and then we have the problems and we have the dilemma due to the changing culture of our time. Now when I say these things, it is with all humility and with Luton boys, but these are happening today and I would not like, I don't want this to be elevated, but these are ha happening. In our day and age, we have the increase of divorce, we have remarriage, parenting out of wedlock is common, same-sex marriage in our time today, the same sex raising children today. Now we have surrogate mother become common. We have the, what we call the cloning. And then in this time of many invention, if you are a couple, you desire to have a son or a daughter with green eyes and brilliant mind and athletic and complexion, fair complexion. You can just go ahead to find in the sperm bank or an Excel bank, which is very, very expensive today. Now, our generation adopted a different way of living to something that is not norm. The life Lee just mentioned, contrary to the ways of God, contrary to the commandments of the Lord, send many of our children to rebellion, to low self-esteem, hate, and then revenge, brutality, killing, just to express the anger in the human heart, and then to some backsliding if they are believers, and then to the going down, 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 to the point of hating God. Now, how many children at a very young age are morally unstable today? 
and many of those young people today are mentally incompetent, emotionally like a CISO because of no father figure in their respected homes, because of absent parents, of double job in material pursuit, and because of divorce. And children are sexually abused and are physically abused. These are some of the causes. But listen to this. There is still a remedy and a solution, and it is not too late. People can still find a father or a mother figure, and the guilt can be erased, and the shame can be changed to worth through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is forgiving and will restore lives shattered by the wind and the heavy rain. Now, 50 years ago, look back to some of you, to those maybe you can look back 50 years ago, 40 years ago, to some of you who are born in the 70s and 60s, you can still just afford to, to understand. 50 years ago, children were typically raised in, in a home with two biological parents. These two parents had focused their mind to raise their children in the way they raised. They were responsible, they were industrious, and they were serving, and above all, they taking care of their parents when they were old. It was not uncommon for the extended family members to reside in a very close proximity, in other words, they are close by, one street to the next street. And then not only that, if, and they are living in a close proximity if they are not living in the same roof. Extended family members not only serve as a role models or mentors, but often as a sounding board when misunderstanding arose in a new you know, married couple. Now parents, grandparents were respected and looked for for guidance during tough times. And that's very, very important today. There's also a support of, for the extended family members living nearby, whether there's a question about parenting, supporters are there for reassurance, and then, and hope is both. Now listen to this. In our present time, family where father and mother and children and grandmother and grandfather and cousins are close for support and help in any kind. Listen to this. Now it is on the endangered species list. The trend of two working parents and family, homemaker and breadwinner, the roles have evolved into something that makes it, it, it is impossible to define and designate an average family. The ones called breadwinner, the ones called homemaker, the role now is very hard to find or rarely exists. Most households require the income of two full-time wage earners just to get by. Today, grandparents are moving out to spend the remaining years in a retirement home, retirement homes, while young couples are leaving the nest in search for greater career opportunities. Now the children at the very young age were forced to get out and then find a job for themselves due to the blood pressure and the normal work they have to do to support themselves, to further their college education at their own expense. Human greed is one of the reasons that break the close ties of many families. The trend of stretching families around the globe means that there are fewer and fewer built in support networks in our communities. Now this study today will bring us back to the fundamentals of a home altered by God. Let's go back again to the Psalms 1, 2, and 3. Take note of three main points there in this verses. Unless the Lord build the house, unless the Lord watches over the city, and then you rise early and stay up late. Three things. Lord is the one building the house. The Lord is the one watching the city. 
and then we are informed that it is also in vain to rise early and stay, stay up late, just working so hard for food to eat. Now, the three important truths revealed in these verses. In building our home, we must be in total dependence on God in establishing our home. In raising our families, the provisions from God through the Word of God for guidance, the wisdom that accompanied in knowing the Word of God will bring us to the application of how to run the family in the right way. The problem is, the secular world is invading the wonderful life of harmonious relationship and the family and turning the peaceful and wonderful closeness to something that will divide, to something that will aspire for power and equality in running the family. Now, the role of the father as provider, protector, and priest at home is undermined by secular ideas. So the division and the power struggle began to emerge. And then the fight started even at Christian home. They don't know who is the leader, who is the second in command. Everybody assume leadership in the respected homes. Listen to this. God must rule in the family and you will surely experience a happy, happy home. Unless this order is put back to the proper place, there is no blessing from God from whom all blessings flow. I take this wonderful passage. The beauty of a house is harmony. The security of a house is loyalty. The joy of the house is love. The plenty of a house is the children. The role of a house is service. The comfort of a house is God himself. Let's go back to that fundamental belief from the olden times initiated by the Lord. Unless the Lord build the house, those who labor, they labor in vain. Now in the second thing you can see, unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard is done watch in vain. Here we are talking about the place of our residence. Unless the Lord protect Quaker Seal or Sydney or Queensland or Melbourne, unless the Lord protect, we can do nothing at all. Something is going to happen. The Lord is in control. Now we are in a time where people in the world and even Christians are worried what would happen to the place of their residence. In some countries, Earthquakes are ravaging their land. Other countries, tsunamis that claim life of tens of thousands. Others could not believe that their elevated spot or homes are being reached by flood. What happened in Toowoomba? Tornadoes in Japan. Uh, uh, earthquake, I should say, in tsunamis in Japan. The radiation. The billions of liters of oil is fell in the open sea. The once beautiful city is struck by tornadoes and heavy typhoons or storms become like a World War II cities in the environment. You know what? Here is the word that the Lord is revealing to us. We must trust in Him even in the place where you and I live. Security and safety will accompany you when you trust the Lord of your life. On the other hand, even we prepare all the blockings, all the sands and all the wood for the expected water from the sea or the river to overflow. And we make a strong foundation for the earthquakes and sensitive apparatus to detect the coming typhoon or tsunamis or earthquakes. The things mentioned cannot give you security. We learned this from the most advanced technology nation in the world, Japan. They, are, they can see what is beforehand, but we can, we, you know what happened? Look at the devastation of the earthquake and the tsunamis in Japan that almost wiped out